Hey, 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 fellas, it is Z Doctor bringing you a wonderful commentary on MW2 on Favela with a little demolition in play right now. And I am excited today because I am back and healthy. Um, I burnt myself a little, and that obviously was no good. Uh, not, not the best thing to do, but it was last weekend, last Saturday night, I had a huge ass bonfire. And, um, you know, I got, I got charred from the bonfire. And, you know, the, the details are, are not, not important right now. They're, they're minuscule. I might tell a story later of how it all happened and how it unfolded, but that's a, that's a different commentary for a different time. Anyway, I'm playing a little MW2 in preparation for MW3, which will be coming out in less than three weeks. The countdown is on. And, um, you know, I just can't wait to see what this game produces and how, how it looks, how it comes out, and how it feels, and how it plays out. I am very excited for this game, and I just cannot wait. Now, um, you know, the bug finally bit me. For a while, I was like, uh, MW3, I'm really not that excited for it. I was honestly more excited for Battlefield 3, like, two weeks ago. And then when the Battlefield 3 beta came out, I realized that everything, you know, like, I, I wished and hoped and, you know, just wanted Battlefield to be, it lived up to it, you know, pretty well almost, but... You know, just some of the flaws kind of like took that excitement away, and I think it's because, you know, I actually played it because I got my hands on it. It takes the excitement down a little bit, down a notch, because it's like I know what to expect now. I can kind of, you know, say, I I bet Battlefield 3 is gonna be exactly like this or exactly like that. You know, you know the patches they fix, you know the things they do. So, for the most part, I'm still re really excited for Battlefield 3, but like I know what to expect. So it, the the whole like curiosity mysterioso thing is not there. But um, let's get right into this this story that I want to tell. I want to tell a little story in preparation for Halloween. I think it's it's only appropriate to be telling ghost stories around the time of Halloween. You know, it's getting late October, so I'm gonna do a little series where I tell ghost stories. If you have any ghost stories and you would like me to tell them, send me a message with the ghost story, or I can you know talk to you on Skype or whatever. We can discuss exactly what happened, so I can uh, you know so I can pass the message on. Anyway, I'm gonna get right into this story. Basically, there was this plot of land right on the eastern shore um, in the Chesapeake Bay, you know, right on the Chesapeake Bay, and if you don't know where the Chesapeake Bay is, you're a dumbass, but it was on the Chesapeake Bay on the eastern shore, and it was divided by a long, long, mile-long dirt road um, that just, you know, traveled through these dense woods, and on each side of the road was a family, so there were really two families on this plot of land. And they had a feud for generations and generations. No one ever knew how the feud got started. But, it, you know, obviously the families had a feud and they didn't get along at all. But they both had little kids. Or, you know, one little kid. So the family, one of them had, had a son and one of them had a daughter. And they were both around, you know, the same age, give or less. Or, I mean, more or less. And, um, you know, they had to walk to school down that, that long dirt road every single day. And it's about a mile. So they were walking for a mile every single day. And of course, each family would give specific instructions to the kid. You know, do not talk to the other, you know, guy or gal. Because they're evil. They're bad people. They have a bad family. You know, the whole bit. But being they were so young, they they were curious. And they just, you know, talked to each other. And then they became friends. But of course, this was all secretly. Because no family that's having a feud would be okay with that. And, um... You know, they, 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 um, you know, they were just all secretive about it. And then as they hit puberty, you know, they started to be attracted to each other. And then they fell in love finally. And, um, you know, once they fell in love, they were like, you know, I want to marry you. But our families would never let this happen. So they decide we're going to get married in secret and run away. So that's exactly what they plan out. They plan out this whole elaborate plot of, you know, you know, getting the priest to wed them. And then running away after that so that their families you know, don't, don't know, and they can't do anything about it, and, um, knowing that the mothers are usually more okay with that type of stuff, each one of them told their own mother, so the mothers worked together because they understood that they were in love, and that that's a big deal, so, so they worked together to plan out this wedding with them, and they, you know, got, got the priest involved, said to the priest what their plans were, and expressed, you know, but didn't really say detail, they didn't say they were holding it back from the from the father. So the priest, you know, just thought, oh, I'm throwing a, you know, I'm marrying these two people together. That's great that the family's got along. So one day, you know, they get married. And um, of course, you know, they're like, just keep it on the DL priest. But the priest goes to the bar and he obviously he gets drunk. And then that was the day the kids were planning 
to run away. You know, they were packing their bags. Their mothers sent the fathers out of the house. And, um, you know, the, the father of the girl who was in love was actually a drunk artist. And, you know, he was, he was an alcoholic, and he get, got drunk all the time. But to get him out of the house, the wife of that husband, of that man, said, hey, how about you go to the bar? So he goes to the bar, and he's there with a the priest, and, you know, obviously they, they both get shit-faced. And then the priest slips and says, hey, so that's really great, you know, that you're allowing, you know, your daughter and that, that other family's boy to marry, even though you guys have a feud forever. Good job putting that past you. And he goes, what? What are you talking about? And then the priest knew he screwed up. So the priest was like, uh, uh, nothing. And the guy was just already running home. He was sprinting home to figure out what the hell was going on and why that, why the, you know, their daughters are apparently getting married. And I know my game's over, but I'm going to keep talking. Um, yeah, anyway, so he, you know, he keeps, so he runs home, he sprints home and he finds, you know, the, the husband or yeah, he finds his wife and the other wife working together to help, you know, send these kids away together to, um, you know, live in peace. And of course he walks upstairs and grabs his shotgun off his shelf and comes down and the daughter's in tears and she's packing up and she has this porcelain doll that she she always loved as a kid and she was about to put that in her bag and she was holding it and then when she, you know, she heard her father home, she ran out of the door with the porcelain doll in her hand. She sprinted for no specific destination, but you know, just out of the door with tons of tears. And um, you know, so she couldn't see well and she was just running and miserable and thinking, well, you know, did he just shoot my husband or my future husband? You know, what just happened? And then, boom, bam, she flattens out. As she trips over the well, she drops into this long, deep well, and she just flattens out on the bottom with her porcelain doll. And, you know, you know, so the whole family's devastated, whatever. The whole bit goes down, and then they finally get to pulling the body out of the well. Well, as they pull her out, they realize she broke her neck and her right arm. When they pull the porcelain doll out, the same exact thing. The right arm is broken in the exact same spot, and so is the neck. And this is a true story, and it was, um, you know, really creepy to the family, and they they were really, really creeped out. And ever since that moment, they've said they have they have seen a white lady, like a white ghost in a white gown, because that's what she was wearing when she ran out of the house. And um, you know, she was, or a wedding wedding dress, my bad, in a wedding thing, and that's what she was wearing when she ran out of the house. And they see her walking around, searching for her husband because she never knew what happened to him. So she, she died with, you know, incomplete knowledge, so she's still trying to figure out what happened to him. Um, so there is my ghost story. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate your support. Um, so long, fellas. Z Doctor is out. Fellas, Z Doctor.